Aloha, I'm Mark Dacascos. I'd like to tell you about some important research and conservation work being done at the National Tropical Botanical Gardens. They have five gardens, the Kampong in Florida and the McBride, Allerton, Limuhuli, and Kahanu Gardens in my hometown state of Hawaii. Like the garden you may have at home, these gardens too are beautiful and idyllic. But they're more than just pretty to look at. They play an important role in revitalizing our ecosystem. Our tropics are in danger. With each passing day, more and more plant species move closer to extinction and some altogether die out. With each death comes a loss of potential, a potential for new cures, a potential for alternative food sources for the world's hungry, and a potential to better understand a civilization's culture and history. The National Tropical Botanical Garden is fighting to stop this loss in Hawaii because they know that if they don't save them here, the rest of the tropics plants could soon follow. Hawaii is the setting for this fight against extinction and the National Tropical Botanical Garden is leading the charge. Programmatically, we have chosen to focus on the Pacific, which is one of the um, biodiverse spots in our planet. It's also one of the areas on our planet that is today most threatened because island ecosystems are very, very fragile. The plants that the Botanical Garden are attempting to save have significance near and far. Until recently, 100% of all medicines were plant-based. Even with current scientific advancements, plants are still used to synthesize half of all medicines. Anyone who has been ill can owe their recovery to plants like the ones found in Hawaii. Humans have depended on plants uh, for their livelihood and health, I think, for thousands of years. People had to obtain their medicines from plants. The plants were originally the source of aspirin, for example. It came from a willow tree. And there are many other uses that we're just now learning about. Plants that have antibacterial, antifungal properties. Hopefully these will be used in, in medicine. Simply put, less plant variety means less potential for new medicines. Many of these plants hold health benefits that may never be fully explored if their populations continue to dwindle. Botanical garden researchers are also experimenting with a promising source of food for the world's hungry. Breadfruit trees. Breadfruit is a starchy fruit that can be easily grown in most tropical areas. A nutrient-rich food that can be easily grown in the areas that need it most sounds almost too good to be true. Global hunger issues are so serious. There are a billion hungry people on the planet. And there are a billion people who have what's called hidden hunger, where they may get enough calories every day, but they don't get the right enough of the right kind of nutrients. The work that they're doing there is to introduce a food plant into tropical parts of the world, which will really change a culture, change a family's life, change the neighborhood that they're living in, and ultimately change their culture. That work has the potential to impact every part of the world. As different species of breadfruit grow increasingly scarce around the world, the collection that the botanical garden holds becomes more and more important. Even for populations in more developed countries, breadfruit can be an important addition to the variety of edible plants. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, a lack of genetic diversity in the food supply could increase the risk of catastrophic crop failure and threaten our food security. Breadfruit presents a valuable alternative to the limited crop selection that many people around the world consume on a daily basis. Breadfruit isn't the only important edible plant in Hawaii. Kalo, another starchy edible Hawaiian plant, represents not just nutrients, but Hawaiian culture and history. It was so crucial in the lives of early Hawaiians that it spawned new words used by Hawaiians even today. There's an ancient saying that we still use today, as long as there's kalo, there will be Hawaiians. As long as there's Hawaiians, there will be kalo. And so the whole, having a really strong cultural focus here, a strong focus on uh, perpetuating the culture and reviving the culture, uh, it's all founded on kalo. The Hawaiian word for family, ohana, comes from the word oha, which is the shoot that grows from the corm of the taro. As the young shoots grow from the corm, people grow from the family. The death of plants like kalo signaled the death of this relationship between Hawaiians and these plants that shaped their culture. The cause of all this devastation is, in part, due to plants themselves. If you ask yourself the question, why are so many of our plants rare? 
It's a very reasonable question to ask because after all, Hawaii is supposed to be paradise, right? And yet, uh, in, in some ways, Hawaii is living hell for nature. And the reason for that is, the more isolated uh, an island group is, that is, the farther it is from other land masses, the more the species there tend to be uniquely adapted to that place. Older species of plants can be vulnerable to newer, stronger varieties called invasive species. We see the plants, you know, these native species slowly being pushed back. You know, what was really common is often becoming more rare. Some of the more rare stuff is becoming critically rare and some of the things are going extinct. Invasive species are plants that have grown on the island more recently due to newer populations settling in the area. As settlers brought seeds and plants not native to Hawaii, the new plants began to compete with the existing ones for space and resources. Over many generations, these newer species have gradually killed off many of the weaker indigenous plants. These plant deaths don't just mean less pretty flowers to look at. Many of these plants have been instrumental in digging into the Hawaiian soil and sprouting roots that have kept rainfall within their habitat. This helps produce a higher quality water supply and a more robust ecosystem. If the extinction of native species isn't stopped, less nutrient-rich water will circulate within the environment. More of it will run off into the towns below, increasing the amount of flooding. To solve this problem, the National Tropical Botanical Garden has been practicing two forms of conservation, in situ and ex situ. Ex situ conservation is where plants are grown outside their natural habitat. In situ preserves plants within their natural habitat. The two types of conservation form a cycle, with one beginning where the other ends. If the last tiger in the world only existed in the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., can we really say that species is not extinct? Well, if the only species of plants can exist in our botanical gardens, that's like that tiger in, in the cage. So what we really need to do is figure out how to grow these plants, repatriate them back to the wild to, to make our ecosystems healthy so that they can regenerate themselves. We make a complete circle, in a sense. A plant that's very rare, obviously, will be less rare if we can establish more plants uh, out there in the ground. And we do that through a, a whole series of different strategies. Some of them involve uh, purely going to very remote places where these plants are already growing, but presumably there's not enough of them, and planting more. One such habitat is the Limuhuli Upper Preserve, a dramatic landscape whose beauty is matched by its danger. With our work, we get flown into remote and isolated locations. It's a really thrilling part of our job to have the helicopter come in. Most of the time they land, sometimes they can't even land. We have to get out of the helicopter and literally be dropped off in isolated and remote locations. Botanical garden researchers note the changes in the area and remove invasive plants that are crowding out the native ones. Out here, green isn't always good. What looks like a healthy forest to the naked eye is actually filled with undesirable plant species. As many of the bad species look similar to the good ones, it's important that staff members are able to identify these differences. The amount of time that they uh, separate in the fronds, the amount of time that they fork is also a way to tell them apart from the native tree fern, and so you can see that they have slightly different textures to the fronds. They also collect seedlings of the threatened plants to be sent back to the horticulture center for ex situ conservation. These seeds are harvested, grown, and cloned in order to create backups should the plants in the wild expire. The ex situ phase doubles as an opportunity to expose the community to rare plants grown out of habitat. The belief is that with education comes awareness. So uh, we are growing about 125 varieties of red fruit collected from all over Polynesia. Some of them are now extinct uh, and we're growing them. But change can't come only with awareness. It comes with action. These important plant species carry the potential for new medicines, increased crop variety, global hunger reduction, and cultural preservation. These plants have had an impact on humans near and far. It's time we return the favor. Volunteer at one of the gardens. Share the garden's message of conservation with friends and family. And do what you can to stop plant loss at the local level.
Thank you. Or as we like to say in Hawaii, mahalo and aloha from the National Tropical Botanical Gardens.